Hi guys, this is Shruti and I'm going to explain something about the metabolism of lipoproteins. And um, so lipo and protein. So these are the two things which are there in the lipoproteins. And lipoproteins uh, are basically chylomicrons, very low density lipoproteins, IDL, L HDL and all that stuff. So the amount of protein defines the name of the lipoproteins. So very low density lipoprotein, intermediate density lipoprotein, and then low density lipoprotein, and then high density lipoprotein simply means that they have in an increasing order, they have more protein. And of course, chylomicrons are also there. And so I would like to divide them in three groups for our understanding. One, two, three. So first group is um, say VLDL and chylomicrons and the second group is IDL and the last group is LDL and HDL. So these are the three groups and like the VLDL and chylomicrons are like mainly carrying fatty acids and a little bit of cholesterol and some uh, lipid soluble vitamins. IDL are just transfer proteins and they are not playing uh, I mean like they do have a role but I'll explain that later and these are cholesterol proteins LDL and HDL and they have their own individual function so let's begin with the first group and let's begin with chylomicron so if there is an intestine suppose this is an intestinal wall and uh, from the lumen we collect all the lipid and it goes into this chylomicron. To be able to exit from the lumen of the intestine, uh, it needs a ApoB48. So once it exits, it goes into the lymph. And from the lymph, it goes into uh, the thoracic duct. And from thoracic duct, via left subclavian vein, it goes into the blood. Here in the blood, chylomicron meets with HDL, and that's uh, HDL carries FO1 and Who and so in the blood. Chylomicron meets with HDL and it's laddered with all the cholesterol, lipid, and fatty acids, essential fatty acids which are not formed in the body and are coming from the food. So the chylomicron is walking around happily and it meets HDL and be friends with it and HDL gives it C2 and ApoE. And so this thing gets C2 and E now it's a complete molecule and it's circulating and while circulating it reaches the capillaries near the adipose tissue and skeletal muscle so we're just showing the adipose tissue here okay and so here's the adipose tissue and now there is a chylomicron having b48 and as told as i told you that b48 is essential for exiting uh, the intestinal lumen, the endocytes, and it also has ApoE and ApoC2. Here, ApoC2 activates the enzyme called lipoprotein lipase. This enzyme will extract fatty acid. It will extract fatty acid from the chylomicron and this fatty acid will combine with glycerol triphosphate and will form a triglyceride, a storage form within the adipose tissue or the adipose cell. So this guy got consumed. What remains is B48 and E and this thing is called chylomicron remnant 
So it's it's gave its party as it so it doesn't have it anymore. Now what it has is uh, some amount of cholesterol ester. So it would want to give it somewhere. So it will just go to the liver. And liver will accept the cholesterol from chylomicron only when it has ApoE. So ApoE is important to take the stuff or the chylomicron itself into the hepatocytes. If it does not have ApoE, it's useless for the liver because liver will not take it. Will not take the cholesterol or anything from the chylomicron or the chylomicron itself unless it has ApoE. So ApoB48 was to exit from the intestinal lumen, ApoE is to get into the hepatocytes. And ApoC2 was to activate the lipoprotein lipase to extract fatty acid into the adipose tissue or the skeletal muscles to form a triglyceride to get stored in the adipose tissue. Once that is done, chylomicron story over is over. So now we come to VLDL which is a similar kind of a thing but it is formed in the hepatocytes. And this VLDL to so it's it's in the formation right now so it's it gets out it's VLDL it can only get out unless, only if it has B100 apo B100 so apo B100 is its uh, you can say the passport for the exit into the circulation without it it won't get out from the hepatocytes and so once it gets into the blood again it will befriend HDL and it will acquire C2 and E and it will function same the only difference is it came from the from the hepatocytes and chylomicron extracted or got the stuff from the intestines from the food and it will just go around circulate and will activate the lipoprotein lipase and which will help it give the fatty acid to the adipose tissue and which will form a triglyceride and and after after this is gone what remains is apple E and B100 so once this thing called VLDL remnant has APO E and APO B100 what it will do is that it will it is it will be called as IDL intermediate density lipoprotein first of all and 80% of this will go to the liver what will remain the 20% will uh, will circulate in the blood and this ideal will get a cholesterol from HDL and the HDL will give the give HDL or HDL will give its cholesterol to the ideal with the help of cholesterol ester transfer protein so cholesterol ester transfer protein will help give the cholesterol from the HDL to the ideal once ideal gets that cholesterol it becomes ldl yes that's what ldl is so now this ldl is there in the blood and it has on it apo b 100 that's it ldl just has apo b 100 on it and ldl is not really once in its natural form ldl is not a bad bad thing you know it's only when it is in access that we eat a lot of a lot of fatty food and it's in access then it gets deposited into the blood vessels because liver stop accepting cholesterol from LDL it just stops it and so the extra cholesterol just circulates and the LDL circulates and it gets oxidized or it just changes and it gets deposited and that makes it bad so LDL apo B100 is now in the blood and it's happy and it's circulating and it will go to the liver and here in the hepatocyte if it has apo B100 then the hepatocytes have a receptor called 
LDL receptor. And it will allow the LDL to enter only if it sees that it has ApoB100 and with the help of that it will enter into the hepatocyte, give its cholesterol and whatever, just take whatever I have, it will just make an endosome through a clarithrin protein and that endosome will then fuse with the lysosome and in the lysosome it will give away all what it has and it will break and and that's it and then the receptor will go back again to the surface to be reused the LDL receptor and the material from the LDL thing is taken out and is used and that's cholesterol and it can be used in making bile salts or acids or it can be given for the hormone steroid based hormone production in other organs or maybe in the circulation can be used for the membrane cell membrane development and so these are the three functions that it will do this cholesterol which is being extracted from the LDL in the liver if there is excess of cholesterol it's too much the liver will it will down regulate the LDL receptor okay to just highlight it I would use red color it will down regulate the LDL receptor and what that what the, what that will do it will not accept any more uh, LDL from the circulation because now the receptor is not there on the surface of the hepatocyte so LDL remains to circulate in the blood and that's dangerous the other thing that it will do is that it will it will also inhibit HMG-CoA reductase enzyme which forms cholesterol so this is a pathway, HMG-CoA pathway, which which you know, which creates, uh, which which makes cholesterol within the hepatocyte. So hepatocyte has its own de novo synthesis of cholesterol, and it will stop that by inhibiting this enzyme. And the third thing will be that it will stimulate ex uh, an enzyme called ACAT, which will help form bile salts like it will increase the utilization of cholesterol by making bile salts or bile acids and whatever so that's why the people who eat a lot of fatty food have this uh, sometimes they get a bile stones and stuff like that because of the excess of uh, cholesterol uh, being used in the formation of bile acids and bile salts and so and so and the people who have like high amount of fatty diet uh, intake then they also have a vascular problem like atherosclerosis and stuff like that so that's how it works so once this is explained the LDL part is somewhat over so let's come to the good part that is called a good lipoprotein that's HDL which carries only APOA APO, APO1 I think it's just APO1 APOA1 yeah so it carries APOA1 and here it has other things too like C2 and E apoproteins and it donates these two to VLDL and chylomicron so so main thing is ApoA1 so this ApoA1 what it will do will I mean like what it will do is uh, it will activate so this thing will activate um, an enzyme called LCAT. There's nothing special about this enzyme, but it's important in a way that HDL, what it does is it circulates in the blood happily and whenever it sees excess of cholesterol or maybe in the blood vessel it sees a, a, a cholesterol streak, it will extract that cholesterol, but what would it do with it? I mean, like it cannot cholesterol is, is not a soluble thing you know you just cannot carry it just like that it won't mix into the watery solution so this LCAT enzyme that which is called lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase will give it give a fatty acid group to the cholesterol and then this 
cholesterol with a fatty acid group is able to get dissolved into the HDL core and can be easily taken to the places wherever HDL wants to take it. To be able to give its cholesterol to the other things, it needs two things. One is scavenger receptor B1. So if HDL wants to give its cholesterol to the tissues like liver, like adrenals for the steroid hormone synthesis or for in the ovaries, testes, in that case these organs should have SRB1 receptor to receive the cholesterol I don't know what I was saying. Uh, somebody came in. So, all right. So, okay. So, SRB1 is needed to receive the cholesterol, just the cholesterol from the HDL. So, this is HDL. And so, the speciality of scavenger receptor is it is not taking the whole HDL within the tissue. Rather, it will just extract the cholesterol from the HDL and give it to the tissue. So this is the speciality of this receptor and so then HDL is free again to go back into the circulation and get more cholesterol and that's how it gives its cholesterol to the, to the tissues. And as I explained it before, for IDL to become LDL, HDL will give its cholesterol to IDL uh, via cholesterol ester transfer protein. So these are the two things, cholesterol ester transfer protein and scavenger receptor B1 which helps HDL gives its cholesterol to the other things like LDL or like in the organs. So I think I've explained everything, but in summary, we can see that what all apoproteins are there. So there is ApoB48, which is seen in the chylomicrons only. Then there is ApoC2 and ApoE, which you will find in Carlomicron, BL, DL, and the original person who has it is HDL, and same goes with APOE. And basically, this is the guy who donates it to these two, Carlomicron and BLDL. Then we have APOB100, which you will see in LDL, BLDL. And then we have ApoA1, which we'll see only in HDL. So that's it. I hope this video will help you explain about lipoprotein metabolism and it's and about the apoproteins and stuff. And if you have any questions, just um, Write them in the comment section and um, if you have any suggestions or any uh, advice, uh, please feel free to share and um, I will be happy to make changes in my teaching style or any other thing that you suggest I should change and um, that's it. And Subscribe the channel if you like my videos and if it helps you, have a good day.